Hi guys, you're welcome back. My name is Bukun Vicky Kara. I hope you guys are feeling good. Thank you for clicking. So this Christian guy is going to tell us why Christians should read or study the Quran. So let's check it out. In the year 1219, at the height of the Fifth Crusade, St. Francis of Assisi and another friar, a companion, traveled to Damietta, Egypt. They traveled along with some crusaders with the intention of both preaching to the crusaders against the fighting, the battles that were underway, as well as crossing the threshold, the border, to meet with Muslims on the other side of the battle line in a mission of peace and dialogue. St. Francis of Assisi was indeed perhaps centuries ahead of his time in understanding that the gospel call to Christian life meant letting nothing get in the way of relationship, even one's faith tradition. And he viewed not his Muslim sisters and brothers as enemies, but as siblings, as friends, as neighbors, as those he was called to love and those he was called to engage with. Nearly 800 years after his death, the Second Vatican Council in the Church, in its decree Nostra Aetate on the Christian relations to non-Christian religions, writes that the Catholic Church rejects nothing that is true and holy in other religions and spends a particular, uh, makes a particular effort to talk about our relationship to our Muslim sisters and brothers. The church regards with esteem, the document says, uh, also our Muslim sisters and brothers. They adore the one God, living and subsisting in himself, merciful and all-powerful, the creator of heaven and earth, who has spoken to men and women, and they take pains to submit wholeheartedly to even his inscrutable decrees, just as Abraham, with whom the faith of Islam takes pleasure in linking itself, submitted to God. Since in the course of centuries not a few quarrels and hostilities have arisen between Christians and Muslims, this sacred synod, that is, the teaching of the Second Vatican Council at the highest level, urges all to forget the past and to work now sincerely for the mutual understanding and to preserve as well as to promote together for the benefit of all humankind social justice and moral welfare, as well as peace and freedom. Mm. Catholic Christians, in a particular way, are called, as we hear both in the Second Vatican Council's teaching, official teaching of the Church, its highest teaching, as well as in the example of people like St. Francis of Assisi, this move to understand, learn about, and to engage in interreligious dialogue. In order to do that, we must understand other religious traditions, and in recent years, there's been increased hostility, perhaps uh, second only to those terrible events of the various crusades uh, back in the Middle Ages between Christians of the uh, global West and Muslims, especially in the Middle East. And we see a lot of Islamophobia, a lot of calls of violence and fear, a lot of discriminatory, racist, and ethnophobic, we can say, uh, perspectives and, and statements on television, and social media, and elsewhere. I want to share with you a book that I just came uh, to, to have a look at, uh, a book that was just recently published this month, uh, in November of 2015, and that's this. It's the HarperCollins Study Quran. What's very important and interesting about this text is that not only does it provide a new translation in English, and I must say, of course, as many of you already know, that in uh, the Muslim tradition, in Islam, uh, you cannot have an authentic translation in any vernacular language that our sisters and brothers in, in, of the Islamic faith believe that uh, this, the Holy Quran is the uh, verbatim word of God that was transmitted to the Prophet Muhammad, uh, and it was done so in Arabic. And so while there can be translations, such as this one that uh, has just recently been published, um, to help in study, especially for those in other religious traditions or those whose primary language is not Arabic, uh, it's, it's important to make that distinction between a study text and what is prayed and what is studied in uh, a more formal way within the tradition. But what's unique about this text is not only is it translated well in English, it's a new translation that took nine years uh, in, in, in working together among the editors and translators and scholars to produce, but there's also a tremendous amount of commentary. I can show you, perhaps 
you can see in here, uh, I can show you up close, uh, there's, there's great resources, great explication and exegesis that helps uh, people, especially those who are not trained in Islam, those who are not uh, Muslim, like myself, a uh, Roman Catholic priest, a Franciscan friar, to understand better what's at the core of the Islamic faith. There are excellent essays that introduce both the history and uh, the, uh, of, of not just Islam, but of the Quran, uh, the history of its translation and study, uh, the methodological background to this text itself and what we have here, um, as well as maps and, and other resources that are really of great use. Um, I can't recommend this highly enough, and you may not find yourself buying this particular text, but I encourage you, um, especially if you have questions about Islam, questions about what our Muslim sisters and brothers believe, to first engage in dialogue with, with those in your community in a peaceful, understanding, open way as St. Francis of Assisi himself did. But also I would encourage you to read the text itself. Sadly, uh, those who tend to grab the news headlines because of tragic acts of violence and terrorism, people like uh, those engaged with the ISIS group in uh, Syria and Iraq and elsewhere, uh, Al-Qaeda and, and other terrorists, they practice something that is not at all supported by the Holy Quran. It is not reflective of the Islamic faith, of, of the Muslim faith. And our Muslim sisters and brothers uh, are, are, you know, really done a disservice when as a collective community and as a popular sort of uh, social imaginary, that way of interpretation, a very distorted and unhealthy interpretation of Islam is portrayed as the normative face of this religious tradition. St. Francis of Assisi and so many others, uh, and those who bother to study the text itself to try to understand the richness and the peace, the justice, the depth, the, the metaphysics, the uh, worldview, the understanding of God, their own respect for the faiths of Judaism and Christianity, what they call the religions of the book. All these things are, uh, you know, deeper and richer and fuller than the violence and the discrimination that exists in our world would lead us to believe. So I encourage you, I'll put the link below to, to where you can find more information about this particular translation uh, and its commentary. And I encourage you to, uh, to take a look, to read with openness and seriousness, uh, rooted, of course, in your own faith tradition, uh, but to explore what our sisters and brothers in uh, the, the religious tradition of Islam uh, believe and to appreciate the richness and beauty of their sacred text as well. May the Lord give you peace. Wow. What I'm trying to get from this whole discussion is the fact that Christians should read the Quran, but it's not telling you to convert, but just to have an understanding of what the Quran says so that you can able to you know see it from another light, from another way that, okay, this is how the Quran is when it comes to this prophet. This is how the Bible is when it comes to this prophet. Like the way, you know, in the Quran, there's Surah Maryam, a whole chapter for Mary, whereas in the Bible is not there. So you just want, you know, Christians to just have some understanding and just, you know, that's, that's the kind of message is passing because it's still a Roman Catholic priest. He has not converted, but he's just trying to let us know, let you know that, okay, even though Muslim, they don't have different translation, they have just one particular translation, which is in Arabic. But if you find it translated English, that's to say that people did it so that it can be easier for other religions to understand or other people that don't know the language, the Arabic language to read and understand. So that's basically the message is passing here. So thank you so much, guys. Don't forget to smash the subscribe button for more likes and comment. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.